did this day meet some of your expectations to the first INOC meeting in Wiesloch? Yeah, I. Uh, it was said it's a success that uh, more than 40 high qualified professionals come here to join uh, the discussion around meeting uh, coaching and organizational development and this is a uh, uh, success and uh, we started with on the content level also to discuss how this meeting can uh, happen this was isb concepts what i did this morning and this was uh, project uh, coaching uh, business project coaching uh, gianfranco did this afternoon and also um, it's a lot it, on the content level it was complicated and we needed some time to orient each other but especially in the afternoon uh, after there have been some more discussions and questions Gianfranco made very clear what his point is and after some time also everybody had the feeling somehow I know all this they came to the conclusion no there is uh, no stage in the world where this is discussed in a qualified way and it's good to experiment how to set up a stage for it and we made a beginning today. So we have, uh, it's, it's all one, but in order to select your limited attention and your limited competence somehow you have to differentiate the field and we differentiate it uh, from our perspective in these four fields. The learning field is organizational development. <coughs> so organizational development means at a major part of the invest learning together because there are no fixed answers. So all the coaching knowledge and all the coaching attitudes we have can be integrated into programs to organize the necessary learning while an organizational developmental process is happening. Usually there's not enough resources and space for that. And they just think they can do it somehow. If this weekend runs really well, what would happen after? Uh, well, there would be a network of people to meet again and uh, maybe to, to learn from each other and uh, to, to find out how others are doing this kind of uh, bringing together person and organization. This would be a very good thing to do. Maybe uh, it's uh, too much of an expectation to say there are specific projects already emerging, but at least that you know uh, who is interested in this field and who might be interested in further developing the ideas we were talking about here. I think afterwards it will happen weekend, that's the very first uh, point, and later uh, uh, I will have, have some more um, colleagues uh, which I will correspond and in some way get some advices or get some ideas and uh, at least have a bigger, nice network. I was really uh, open regarding my expectations uh, when coming here because I think it's even part of the process uh, to produce the result. But of course uh, I would uh, love the idea to have afterwards uh, really at least the beginning of an international network that is going to be vivacious also and not just on paper. When it goes well people like to come back and bring colleagues of the same qualification and especially bring colleagues from other countries to invite them to join this discussion because we do not want to have a discussion of internationality in the first place, but we want to have an international discussion of the focus coaching meeting organizational development. And I hope uh, many from other countries come here and they build communities and stages for discussions in their countries. And so a network uh, evolves from that. I would hope that everyone joining us here in this conference today and tomorrow will go home and continue to build the network. I hope that we will find in the end a consensus in maybe how we could network. Okay. And uh, I hope it will be a, a very good uh, fundament for our INOC.
what I would like to happen would be to be involved in an international coaching development process and network. What is really important in the market is to focus people on the competitive challenges that the global economy, the technological revolution is facing corporates or individuals or entrepreneurs. They, we are all from the biggest company to the smallest enterprise. We are all facing the same context with technological change going on every day. And there are moments when the small micro enterprise is stronger than the dinosaur. As far as the, the, the micro enterprise design the good product, the good business model, the good uh, process, innovate, innovation is the, the key word today. We get a lot of discussions today. Can you tell me something that is really triggering you now? Well, really triggering is um, how you make this experience everyone brings in uh, work in this international network. And then again, the dimension of organizational coaching. This is uh, really challenging in many, many ways. What I find fascinating is the idea of starting a network of small coaching businesses, because I think there's a real lack there. We tend to work on our own. We have a lack of resources to a certain extent. And if we were involved in a network of small coaching businesses, then we would know who to go to, to extend our knowledge and also our, our resources to find people to work with. One thing is uh, that I'm really grateful that this thing is happening here because uh, I think that uh, in Germany, or in German-speaking world, uh, there is too much on one-to-one -one coaching and uh, it should be more on the collective and, 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 and group or systemic part. Um, um, meaning uh, to work with real systems and not only with, with one person. And uh, I, I like this about this um, um, from event here, uh, that Bernd started something to bring this together. What triggered me here is that there was an understanding that coaches would have some development uh, needs to go into that direction and uh, also the openness to see what is already happening. So for instance, that action learning is already existing for a couple of, of decades so, and is further developing. So that there is a lot of also theoretical background and practical experience which can be used to, uh, um, to further develop this. I believe we have uh, the possibility to have an impact on uh, what's going on in the future of organizations, particularly uh, in this time where change is so deep and so revolutionary. Triggering for me is more uh, to see the community of our professionals, uh, which work on very, very different uh, areas in, in the industry with different clients and uh, uh, partly with different focus, but uh, on, a, on such kind of high professional level, that really triggers me. So we are not alone in the world and that's good. I have actually two things, or even more uh, things that are triggering me, so it was a very inspiring day so far. Uh, one is uh, the idea about organizational learning, so that we facilitate processes where really organizations can learn themselves, thus also even more passing over the responsibility and at the end having more sustainability in the work we do and for the organizations. And the other one uh, is uh, something that has to do with learning uh, as well, but that uh, as in Wills already, we don't only learn with our mind, but also with our body. That was mentioned several times today, and we even had it in discussions. And I think this is something we have to integrate more and more in our work, this aspect. For example, a general manager asks for help his people, his executives, to be more cooperative because there is a change in the market that requires a more integrated approach. 
to the to, in the services the the the, the passage from a product oriented offer to a solution oriented uh, offer is that clear okay how do we propose our intervention well we say this is a problem that requires a change in the individual attitudes and priorities and the behaviors. This is a change that requires a different kind of cooperation among people. And this is a, 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 a change that Im implies some different policies, some different programs, some different presentations, initiatives to the market. Okay, so you have three changes to introduce. One is individual behavior. Second is organizational behavior. Third is business process. Could you add like three key words or three words that came in your mind thinking about the first day of this conference? Professionalism, innovation, business. Feeling a bit fatigue, uh, how much work it is to set up so, uh, such a thing, and some hope that it's worthwhile, and uh, a lot of appreciation of, for others who join it and who really want to develop something further without uh, thinking of their benefit in the first place. Integration comes to mind, organizational development comes to mind, and the idea of the coach as a coach for an entrepreneur and projects. It's an openness for the further development of coaches and coaching, and uh, it's also about power dynamics and micropolitics, which was addressed. And uh, yeah, very many um, interesting people from different backgrounds. I have inspiring because it really brings you out also the discussions of your daily routine, bringing in new thoughts uh, that can grow like plants. And uh, the other thing I have is uh, interculture. I mean, we have uh, some guests from abroad and in several discussions, there were already really interesting intercultural questions for me. And um, yeah, this is something I really appreciate also. And uh, it was de developed by Deborah Rowland and Malcolm Hicks, uh, they, who wrote a, f a, f a great book called Sustaining Change. Um, and they looked at real life organizational change projects and their success rates and the patterns that were used in, in the change processes. And they identified success by the perception of the stakeholders. So they were interviewing the people who started the project, the people who worked in the project and the people who were affected to identify was it successful. And they found basically four categories. And this really, I've, I'm using this now in every project, so I would like to share this with you. When you look at content and process, both can be either predefined, someone thinks about it and defines it, or it can be co-created and emerge on the way as you go on. Now, if content and process is predefined, that's what they call the directive approach. Someone says, we need to go here and there, this, these are the goals, and here's what I want you to do. So it's about tell and sell, you will find rollouts and rollout plans, you will find uh, predefined deliverables, what a project has to bring, um, and the mental model is, I can manage change. And many uh, Leaders have this model, but also many consultants. So that's something to keep in mind. What does it need to make INAC really successful? I think we do need uh, an agreement on what INOC is or will be 
and we need enthusiasm for this idea um, and many, a lot of patience. My hope is that this idea of international and cultural, which has been put into the ground today, will grow and blossom and bloom and bear fruit. My doubt is that there are some factors that speak against it. But my hope is stronger. I think essential is there are, that there are some people who have the passion to run and organize uh, in the center of INEC for the next, let's say, two or three years. To really, um, uh, in some way, sacrifice their own time and energy to that point, and then it will run. I'm completely convinced. Especially there are some colleagues amongst us who have much experience who develop concepts for, uh, of their own, who have newsletters and could be presenters uh, as well. And some especially do international projects already. And this is one of the options for the next meetings, to have two or three projects like this or another school or another approach being presented and then go on with the discussion. Um, there's a lot of experience. It's the problem for me is not that the practical experience is not there. The problem is there is no programmatic uh, description of all that's there. Uh, so if we discuss coaching on a programmatic level, most people fall back in a one-to-one -one psychologically oriented uh, setting. And this is not enough for organizations. I think the most important thing was to start it, and um, I think um, um, INOC should stay open for, um, for new developments, for ideas, and, and so, and um, try to offer maybe a forum to exchange for those people interested. My dream is that we meet together again next year in uh, May, here, and maybe uh, so next year in the Milano. next year in Milan. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> I can join your dream. And we certainly hope that each of you brings an international partner next time. <laughs> uh, he said, otherwise you are not allowed to come again. <laughs> I, this is not my, not my attitude, <laughs> but why not? And, uh, and if you have any suggestion of what we can, what we should do during this, if you agree to this, uh, during this meeting and the framework we, ha we had this time, uh, please tell, tell it, we gather it. I would suggest if we want to be international, we could have a LinkedIn group. Yes, please. Yes, uh, Xing is a little bit more German. To ask the other way around, do you have anything in mind that would, could happen? and then INOC would not happen next year, from your personal perspective? No, except you, uh, the interest you tell us now is fading and nobody comes. But no, I'm in a good uh, hope that we can grow in this matter, manner. And I, I feel like uh, you basically agree in the way also, it's not clearly defined how we think about growing. <laughs>